After having watched Castle in the Sky, again, it's one of my favorite movies, and my girlfriend happens to own a lot of Studio Ghibli, so we watch them quite often. When watching the movie though, I paid a lot of attention to some of the weather details they include. I may go over those in another video about things they get right and some other interesting features about the movie, but something I wanted to discuss today was the storm around Laputa. Not necessarily as a storm itself, but it's a storm that's been going for years, something we don't really see on Earth, and it made me wonder, what is the longest lived storm in history? So of course we'll be starting here on Earth today. There's a few reasons that some storms don't last for years on Earth. Hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons, they require warm water about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 17 degrees Celsius, weak winds in the troposphere, a pre-existing area of low pressure, and high pressure in the upper atmosphere. On Earth we meet these parameters quite well. Until you leave near the equator when the waters cool down, there's still ice, there's still land, there's wind shear, there's a lot of things that are going against hurricanes and typhoons once you leave the warm waters of the equator. Currently on Earth though, we have had a couple storms, two in fact, that are very long lasting. In 1971, Hurricane Ginger in the Atlantic and in 1994, Hurricane slash Typhoon John had lasted for 31 days. That's a long time, actually. 30 days is no easy feat. In fact, 31 days, which makes it more, it's no easy feat for a storm system to last that long. Those are the longest on Earth, at least that we know of. I mean, the history always has a lot of things we don't know because we weren't there. And that's just the Earth. What about extraterrestrial vortexes? Space storms or space cyclones? How long do those last? And how big can they get? Well, first off, we know they can get massive. Let's, let's take a look at one of the most famous storms in our solar system, the Great Red Spot on Jupiter. Most people have seen this before. When you look at any picture of Jupiter, you notice this giant pimple, which is just massive storm. And it's a beautiful storm. This storm is large enough to shove Earth into a little more than twice. This particular storm is also at least 400 years old, possibly older, might be a little less. There's a lot of things in space that are kind of a best guess based off of what we know. Either way, this storm has winds of over 260 miles per hour and it is just massive. Look at this thing. That does bring up an interesting question though. How did this storm form? Are there oceans underneath the clouds on Jupiter? Is there a massive fan on the surface? Well, to be honest, we're not entirely sure because no one's ever been to the surface and likely no one ever will due to the pressure, heat, and other stuff. It's thought that Jupiter does have a liquid metal helium type of surface above its core. There would also be a lot of heat closer to Jupiter's heart, and the hot air will rise, the cold air will sink, there's still wind shear, there's still the planet spinning, causing winds to form. So there's a lot that'll happen, plus there's moisture everywhere, so it's bound to happen. But Jupiter has more storms than just the Great Red Spot. You look anywhere and you can see a few spots here and there, but let's take a look at the Southern Hemisphere. So the South Pole of Jupiter is just gorgeous. It's a big blue field speckled with white dots everywhere, and those white dots are vortexes. They're huge, they're all swirling and passing by one another, seemingly without interruption. These storms are also older, long-lived, and some are about the size of Earth as well, so they're massive. But they aren't as long-lived as some other storms. Likely, the Great Red Spot is one of the older storms in the system. Let's go jump ship just a little bit and head over to Saturn. Saturn doesn't have a great red spot, on occasion it does have a massive great white spot, which brings up another question about names and why there's also the great dark spot on Neptune and there's a lot of other spots in this system. Either way, let's take a look at the North Pole of Saturn. This is Saturn's Northern Pole. This is a massive hexagon. The whole thing isn't exactly a storm. The very center is, but the outer edges, once you get further away, are more just clouds that are flowing with the direction of the winds. This hexagon, they believe, might be caused by a steep latitudinal gradient in the speed of the atmospheric winds in Saturn's atmosphere. But at the center, there is a big old vortex in this thing, a big old storm. And a lot of gas giants and some other planets have a large vortex at their poles. These storms are very old and they seem to never really dissipate. On gas giants, there's lightning and even rain and there's all kinds of moisture on these worlds, so storms are pretty frequent and common on worlds like this. 
The chemical makeup might be different than what we have here at home, but they can still create storms, like on the moon Titan, where from what we know has methane lakes and therefore it rains methane on the planet because it's cold enough to do that. But we're here to discuss ancient giant storms, so why not take a look at another storm, one that belongs to our neighbor. Venus is about the size of Earth. In fact, many call it our sister planet, though it's more like a distant cousin that's horribly disfigured and burned. Venus's surface is marred and scarred from the sulfuric acid and CO2 in the atmosphere, which could possibly lead to acid rain, though it's actually too hot so it wouldn't even rain. Actually, uh, it's... It's a whopping 864 degrees Fahrenheit, 462 degrees Celsius, so likely there's no liquid or moisture uh, near the surface at all of this planet. Well, I mean, there could be liquid rock or metal. But in the upper atmosphere, there's some clouds, there's wind, and they say in certain regions it might be cool enough to actually be able to live on. And by live on, I mean likely uh, you'll die to acid rain, but the temperature's suitable enough to where you can go out in a spacesuit and everything. So, but let's just move on to what we're actually here for, and that's a polar vortice on Venus, a place with no moisture has a vortex. Now, polar vortices form because of heated air from the equatorial latitudes when they rise and spiral towards the poles. They are carried by fast winds and as the air converges on the pole, it, it sinks down because it cools. It creates a vortex, much like those found in water on drains or tornadoes. That's a much better example, I think. On Venus, though, there isn't really any rain with these vortexes, but lightning for sure happens. These storms can have long life cycles, especially because on other planets, it's such a continual repetitious cycle of how they form and reproduce like that, especially on Venus. You have it so a single day on Venus is about a year it takes for uh, that planet to spin on its axis. The winds though are moving so much faster they take four days, four Earth days, to spin around the planet. So they cause a lot of havoc. Of course, there's a lot of other storms out there in the universe, and even within our own solar system, many we have yet to discover. Space weather is such a huge topic that I really can't dive into it all in one episode. Likely I'll have another one out soon about some other space weather, not sure what, but I have a couple of ideas you might like. So what do you guys find most interesting about weather or even space weather? I'd love to hear what you all have to say because it's a lot of fun just discussing with people what's interesting to them. A lot of research and time actually went into this episode, so it came out a little later than I would have liked. But thanks again for watching, and feel free to share a like, and if you'd like to be updated on future content, hit that subscribe button. Also, I made a Twitter account I'll be testing out and learning since I've never used Twitter before, so if you'd like to see that, uh, I have a link to that in the description. I'll be putting up some pictures of some things I've taken recently. Thanks again, and have a great day.